That's the only thing about it. Taking blood pressure. Please. Okay, I, I first came over, I think it was like 75, and all the houses was full, there was people living everywhere, it was a real beautiful neighborhood, it had beautiful trees that used to make a canopy in the summertime, you never had to get hot, then the city came and cut all the cotton picking trees down, and they said they were going to replant, but they never did, and then my buddy John used to live over there. <laughs> he was he was the man that sold everybody's houses. Because like the little house that I lived in across the street over there, it was made, it was built by the lady that who lived in it, her husband. And she passed away. And before she passed away, she sold it. And we got it. And uh, it the neighborhood had just been going. A lot of people have moved out but have never come back. They don't they don't realize what a beautiful piece this is here in the city of Detroit. It's quiet. All except the little crazy kids down the street on their motorbikes. They come up here all times at night. And in the wintertime they like to come up here and slide in the snow on their bikes. I said they're gonna break their neck one day. Don't be sitting out here and gonna laugh at them. this neighborhood, John, he was the realtor, and he sold all these houses, these houses all used to be white, and he sold them all to black people. As soon as he put the first family in, they started migrating to the suburbs. They got out there where they don't have no water, and they got, had, some of them had to use propane, they didn't have no gas, but they didn't want to be and live around blacks. I think we have kept the property up very well. We don't have no arguments. We don't do anything. We just like to live. And that's all I want to do is just live and be happy. And thank the Lord for every day I get up. That's what kind of reaction did uh, John get from other white people when he started selling to blacks? They, they they didn't like it very well. And uh, so they made him angry, so that's all he did. He started selling them to black. Because Miss Williams' house over here, I think that was the first house he sold to blacks. And then he sold one across the street and the other one. As fast as they would move out, he would sell them to black people. And like, <laughs> and I got to know John very well. And we used to sit out on the porch in the summertime and drink Manhattans. <laughs> and only one thing good about it, all I had to do was go across, stagger across the street to my house. Cause we'd sit up there and get drunk as skunks drinking Manhattans. He'd go in the house and go to bed and I'd stagger across the street and fall, fall on my floor, on my couch and I'd go to sleep. But it's, he was a beautiful man. He, he treated everybody with the utmost respect. He loved everybody. And he lived over there until he passed away. And I miss him. Because I don't have nobody to sit out on the porch with anymore and drink Manhattan's with. <laughs> so that's all I got to say about us and our neighborhood. Thank you very much. Well, what happened to his wife? His wife committed suicide. He was sitting on the front porch and she took a 22 pistol and shot herself in the head. But that wasn't the first time that she had ever tried that. So when we called, we called his daughter and told her all about it and she said, oh, she finally did it this time. And what was John's reaction when he heard the shot and went inside? He went inside and he, he found her and she was laying 
on the downstairs in the bed, on the bed. And he just started crying. He came over and told me, he said, Johnny, she said, she did it. She killed herself this time. And so, that was a horrible thing. You know, you come in and find your spouse dead. And a few minutes before that, she was saying, hi, hello, just as happy. And went in the room, never came back out. Do you think there was any connection between her suicide and his selling to black people in the neighborhood? No, no. She was okay with that? Oh yeah, she was okay with other that. We used to sit out and talk. We'd come over and sit on the porch with her. We'd sit there and talk and everything. We enjoyed, we, you know, it, it was very enjoyable being around them. You know, I mean, everybody, everybody knew him. Everybody liked him. And she had watched all the little kids that was here, watched all them grow up, like the girl crop next door. She just turned 50. And that's her baby girl. And she just turned 50. And John was, knew her ever since she was a baby, you know. And so she used to give out little Christmas cards and everything to everybody on the, in the neighborhood. It was, it, you know. This was a, a beautiful place at the time. It's still beautiful. It's just some of the crazy people that live in it. Like who, like what? Oh man. They they ride motor they ride their motorbikes, they don't have any mufflers on them. And they come up here and they spin around in the middle of the street and they make all kinds of noise and stuff. And then they fly back down the street and then they'll come back again. And they'll do this up until about sometimes until twelve, one o'clock in the morning on the little bikes. In the last 10 years or so, how has the neighborhood changed? The neighborhood hasn't changed. It's just the people that moved into it. The neighborhood is still pretty. It's still quiet. Not, it hasn't changed. This end. Now down on that end, I can't tell you what's happening. But this little block in here, it hasn't changed. It's still quiet. Let me take this. Mm -hmm. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, I'm all right. I called you last night, see if you made it home, but you, you didn't call me back. Uh-huh. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. I'm getting interviewed right now, so. I noticed you carry a weapon. All the time. How do you use it? I don't. I just carry it. But I ain't afraid to shoot them. You know. I, I've been carrying a weapon ever since I came out of Vietnam. After two years in the in the Nam, I refuse to let anybody try to hurt me. I'm 76 years old right now, and I intend to live another 76 years or more because I'm too damn ornery to die, and I refuse that. So that's not even in my vocabulary. They're like when we used to we did. We used to do motion pictures, and they, we were doing movies. And the man say, "Who want to die today?" He say, "John, you want to die?" Say, Hell no! I don't even want to die in playing. I don't. I know I don't want to die live for real. So I wouldn't. I never would take a scene where they would shoot. We gonna give you a close up. I don't care. I don't want to play dead. What I'm, about when you're doing Civil War reenactments? I don't fall off. I ride my horse. I don't fall off the ground too hard. I don't fall. And then again, that's the only time I get a chance to shoot white boys and don't go to jail. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, that's the only time. So I love it. <laughs> I come out the bushes on the back of my horse with two pistols in each one in each hand, shoot. Do you carry your gun when you go outside? No. Do you I have just, a permit? 
not I just carry my gun in around the house hmm. I have around I always put it where I can get it because there's no telling that's like I found look like somebody cut the bottom of one of my screens you know because sometimes I lay here at night and have the windows open and I was messing with this screen the other day and there's a slice on the bottom of it so I'll say I must have made a movement or, or did something and they didn't come back so I lay in there with my pistol I say now if you'd be crazy enough to come in my house I'm crazy enough to shoot you if you heard me living next door to you call help Johnny I'd be there with your gun probably with my shotgun ah. you know. well, I feel a lot safer knowing you're next door <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, with a shotgun, you don't have to put no names on your bullets. All you do is just pull the trigger and mm. hit something. Mm. But, uh, I go up in the woods and I shoot my gun sometimes. Just for the hell of it. And I put them in the back of my truck. In the cases. Lock the cases and then I go up and go on the road with it. I gotta take all my all my black powder pistols. I gotta take them down to my partner down in Florida. He gonna he gonna re redo something to the barrels. I don't know what the hell he gonna do. But he said we can put cartridges in them. After that, I said okay. So they're gonna redo the barrels on our pistol, so we don't have to keep putting that black powder in them. We can put shoot black powder, but we can shoot blanks. Cut this one. Thing about taking blood pressure.